begin our first lecture on the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. The Introduction 1. The Writer of the Book King Solomon 2. The Time in Which It Was Written During the Last Year of Solomon, King Solomon's Reign about 940 BC. 3. The place where it was written, Jerusalem. 4. The purpose of the book. It records the king's failures in life during his reign. It writes of the joy of obtaining truth. It is Solomon's written confession. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 The title of chapter 1 is Vanity. There are five main points of the book. First, the words of the preacher, verse 1. Second, the vanity of the world, verses 2 to 7. The third, all things are full of weariness. Fourth, no change is new. Verses 9 to 11. Fifth, the limit and vanity of man's wisdom. Verses 12 to 18. First, the words of the preacher. Verse 1. Let us read. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. The verse says, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Solomon does not reveal his own name, but he lifts up the name of his father. The reason for this is, first, he is blameless in that he became king after his father. This means that he has a sense of pride in continuing the kingship in the faith. Solomon did not inherit the throne, nor was the power transferred to him. It happened because it was the will of God. When we look at 22 verses 6 to 16, we see that God prophesied that Solomon would become king. God's words were fulfilled. Therefore, Solomon is blameless in that sense, and he writes the book of Ecclesiastes with self-esteem. As he does, he confesses that he is the son of David. Second, he has a heart that yearns for the faith of his father. Solomon loved his, his father. It says, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, the preacher. The biblical evidence of this is found in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 6. When Solomon prayed in the presence of God, he prayed that he would learn from David's faith. faith. When we see this, we can see that Solomon yearned for his father's faith. David did not leave an inheritance of fame or glory, but he gave his son the faith that God gave him. Therefore, we too must leave an inheritance of faith. If our children love their fathers and serve their mothers for money, that is not faith. Instead of teaching his son fame, David taught his son about God 
and he taught Solomon the ways of loving God. Because of this, Solomon, even when he became old, wanted to follow after his father's faith. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. David taught Solomon the way he should go. Therefore, although Solomon was sinful and corrupt, Solomon ate in hold of by the word of God, as his father had taught him. He recorded Ecclesiastes, where it says, The son of David, Solomon. We too, like David, need to teach our children the way to go. Then, our children's faith will not leave them when they are old, and they will live according to the will of God. What is the point of leaving our children a sum of money? What is the point of handing down fame? Everything in this world disappears. Like David, we must teach them the way they should go. Then, the child will not lose his faith when he is old. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says that those who hear the word of God and obey it, he was high above the nations of the world. This is why the Jews teach the Bible. For this reason today, there are many globally wealthy Jews. Israel is a small country, but it is very powerful. They are wise. This appears in the Bible. The Word of God is the only guide to eternal life. Therefore, King Solomon wanted to learn the faith of his father. We too need to work so that our children can learn from our faith. We need to leave an inheritance of faith, just like David did. Solomon's humbleness is the reason he says, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Normally, people want their names to be honored. When people write books, they write their names and of the book. Everyone in the world likes to be lifted up. However, Solomon's humbleness brings him to write the son of David, king in Jerusalem. He honored the name of David because he was humble. This is learning from Jesus. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, Jesus' heart is gentle and lowly. This is the fruition of our faith. It is the fruit of faith. We believers in Jesus must be humble. If we look into the fields in the summer, we see the grains stiffly raising their heads, shaking their heads in pride. But when fall comes, they bow their heads. It means 
that I am lacking. They bow their heads because they are ashamed. It is because they have bore their fruit. We need to learn from the heart of Jesus. Look at the colors of the grains. Why don't we, don't we harvest them when they are yellow? This is the light of the sun. It is the spiritual light of Jesus. Those who have bore fruit are humble. Solomon did a lot of things. However, everything is in vain. Now that he is old, he makes his confession. He is confessing that he is the son of David, king in Jerusalem. This comes from his humility. Therefore, we too need to be humble. God gives His grace to those who are humble. For this reason, the believer must always be humble. It, humility is obeying the truth. It is obeying the Word of God. If we obey the Word of God, we realize our shortcomings and we automatically bow our heads. We need, we must be humble before all people. In the time of the Apostles, young people were very proud. 1 Peter chapter 5 Verses 5 to 6 says it like this. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that, at the proper time, He may exalt you. The young people did not respect their reason. The Apostle Peter wants them to be humble. When the time comes, God will exalt them. Being exalted by people results in us falling to the ground. However, when God exalts us, we are lifted up forever. God exalts us and He humbles us. He takes away and He gives us life. Therefore, we must be humble before God. Here, King Solomon does not reveal his name, but he honors his father's name because he is blameless in succeeding the kingship of David. Second, he longed for the faith of his father. This also comes from a humble heart. We need to bear the fruits of our faith. Verse 1 The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. The word preacher appears in this verse. The original word in Hebrew is Keheletha. This word means to assemble. It means wisdom. 
It means to receive and collect wisdom. The person who receives wisdom is bound to share wisdom. Wisdom is the gospel. Wisdom is Jesus Christ. In Him is hidden knowledge, wisdom, and every treasure. Therefore, Jesus, who is wisdom, is our treasure map. Dear believers, we have found an unexpected lump of gold. What are we to do with this news? Will we hide it? Will we tell the news to our brothers? We will tell it wives. We will gather our neighbors and throw a feast. How happy must we be to have found this treasure? The preacher gained wisdom. Because he found wisdom, there was no way he could not record the book of Ecclesiastes. That is why Solomon assembled all the people and preached this message. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 says, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Within Jesus there is hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Will we not preach this amazing news? Beloved believers, all of you have discovered the treasure who is Jesus. Then are you going to keep this to yourself? We must actively spread the news. I too have come here today. The real is, I have discovered Jesus, our treasure. My heart is burning. My heart makes great effort to share this treasure I have found. I hope that you hear this lecture and discover the treasure that is Jesus Christ. I also pray that you do all you can in your strength to spread this treasure. In this way, the preacher gained wisdom, and he spread wisdom. Solomon told the message of God's amazing grace that saved him from his sins. We too were living in sin in the past. We must come out from the past, discover our treasure, Jesus Christ, and do what we can to share the news. Jesus was traveling. He was passing by Samaria. It was glaring down on him. In the land of Judea, it can get really hot at around noon. It was a time when everyone was taking a nap. Jesus and his disciples were passing by a well. The disciples knowing that Jesus was hungry, went around the village looking for food to buy. When everyone was resting, one woman appeared. This woman went to a well at noon under the blazing sun to collect some water. Then she met Jesus. Jesus said, he will give her water of eternal life. He said, Whoever drinks of my water will never be thirsty again. 
This woman's eyes lit up. Why did she feel this way? There was a reason the woman came to fetch water at this time of the day. She was a corrupt woman at five of the past. She was ashamed, so she tried to avoid people. That is why she secretly came to get water at noon. This is when Jesus said he will give her water of eternal life. Is this not a joyous event? Our Jesus says this, I will give you water. Bring your husband. When Jesus told her to bring her husband, she replied in this way, I have no husband. Jesus replied, You have five husbands. The man you are with now is not your husband. Then how many husbands does this woman have? In the past, five, but now, one. It is a total of six men. She had five husbands in the past, but she could not fill her empty heart. She was not happy, but then she met Jesus. Jesus gave her eternal life. Bring Jesus Christ knows everything about us. The moment she discovered Jesus, the woman's life changed. Now she became a preacher who preached around her village. She found Jesus, who is wisdom. She found treasure. The woman used to avoid people in her shame. Now there is no one she avoids. She preached by saying, Come, the Christ we have been waiting for, the one whom we have been longing for, has come. The Samaritan woman became a preacher. She was only able to do this because she had found her treasure. She had found wisdom. When we find true wisdom, when we discover true treasures, we will not hide like this sinful Samaritan woman, but we will reveal ourselves and share the treasure we have found. Now, this woman is no longer poor. She changed to someone who preached the good news. This is the definition of preacher. A preacher is someone who assembles people. It means wisdom. The one who gained wisdom gathered others and preached. Believers, I hope that all of you become preachers. I hope you become people who share wisdom. The second point is the vanity of the world. Verses 2 to 7. Verse 2, let us read. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. The preacher is speaking. The preacher is the one who has gained wisdom. He is the one who assembles. He says vanity a total of five times. Vanity in Hebrew is Hebel. It means vapor or the breath of humans. Believers, our breath appears and disappears quickly. It dis Vanity means everything will disappear like our breath. The writer says this five times because first he emphasizes the true vanity of things 
This is why it is recorded five times. What kind of person was Solomon? He had one thousand concubines. His plates were made of gold. He conquered the surrounding nations. He did not lack anything. But in the end of his days, he says, Vanity of vanities, vanity of vanities, all is vanities. Why did he say this? He is emphasizing the vanity of all things. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 24 and 25 says, All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Everything in this world. Are there things you desire in this world? We all have our desires. How can we compare what we have to what Solomon has? Solomon had everything he could possibly get. He confesses that all is vanity. Beloved believers, our flesh is like grass. This world is like the fog. There are three heroes of the world. They are Alexander, Genghis Khan, and Napoleon. Alexander the Great ruled the world at a young age, but he died at the age of 33 due to an endemic, and he left a will. What did he say in his will? He asked that his hand be placed outside the coffin. Why did he want his hand outside of the coffin. He wanted to show the visitors that he is entering the afterlife with empty hands, empty in the sense that we leave everything behind. On December 28, 2006, a rich man in the United States won the lottery. He received about two hundred million dollars. He was forty years old. He was living in the state of Michigan. He worked as an excavator. His wife worked at a supermarket for six dollars an hour. They had received a sum of two hundred million dollars. But these people did not spend all this money, but they died one year, one year later. Every night, he went out to spend money. He bought nice clothes to wear. He ate good food. But nothing was fun. Do you know how blessed we are to work? Do you realize how joyful it is to do the Lord's work? The man who won $200 million died in one Thus, everything is meaningless. Solomon knew this, so he said vanity five times. Everything in this world is vanity. Not believing in Jesus Christ is the greatest vanity. This world is an illusion, and it will pass by. There was a Chinese emperor by the name of Qin Shi. He conquered the entire world. He built the Great Wall of China. To live eternally, he sought after elixir plants. Eventually, he died. 
Therefore, all is vanity in the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 17 says, The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. Yes, everything is meaningless. Verse 2 says, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Verse 3 What does man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? The work that man does under the sun is all vanity. Solomon is saying that it is all meaningless. The first reason is man does not gain by toiling under the sun. Verse 3 says, What does man gain by all the toil? A person goes through the four phases of life, birth, old age, sickness, and death. A person is born and gets sick, gets old, and dies. This is the process of life. Children cry when they are born. The child is crying because it is sad about its future of suffering. It says, toils under the sun, referring to everyone who lives on this planet. A person will toil, but he will gain nothing. Who will answer our toiling? The answer is Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 29 say, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I hope all of you will lay down your burdens and labors before the cross of Jesus. I hope you labor for the, wor for the Lord. That is what remains in eternity. Like we saw in the text, you will gain nothing if you toil for yourself. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 says, The flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. Chasing after our greed is meaningless. They are nothing but toil and sadness. There is nothing that remains. If we do not do these things in faith, everything is meaningless. Everything we do without faith is vanity under the sun. Therefore, we need to do everything we do in faith. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 says, Whoever sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Those who live for the flesh will become corrupt. Some people live their whole lives for the flesh. When they die, their bodies disappear. It all disappears. If we do not live in faith, this will happen 
to us. Toiling under the sun is vanity. It is like a house built on sand. What happens when we build houses on sand? Not too long ago, there was a big flood in China. I also saw on television that an earthquake had happened. If the buildings were built better, if they had built it with better steel bars, there would not be that much damage when the earthquake or flood struck them. Because they did not build the buildings with steel bars, it was like a house built on sand that fell apart when the earthquake and flood happened. All of this is vanity. It is not living in faith, like building a on sand. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, Jesus speaks. He says that a house built on sand falls when the floods come and the winds blow. Beloved believers, toil under the sun, but do so in faith. If we do not do it in faith, it becomes sin and it becomes vanity. We believers have a hope. When we believe in Jesus and do things in faith, our actions will remain in the presence of God. Therefore, believers, I hope that you do everything in faith. They are the things that remain in eternity. Verse 4 A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Or says, A generation goes and a generation comes. It means, in this world of vanity, generations come and go. People can only live through one generation. We all eventually die. Can a dead person return to this earth? A dead person cannot come back to this world. In this lecture, I talked about the Emperor Qin Shi. Can this man come back? We also talked about Alexander the Great. Can he return? You and I have met at this place. In a little while, we will no longer be on this earth. Can we come back to this world? No, we cannot. A generation goes and a generation comes. How important is it for us to realize? Solomon did many things during his lifetime. In the last of his days, he came to realize such things. He had wisdom that was unprecedented. He was a respected king. He did not lack anything. When it was time for him to go to God, he says, A generation goes and a generation comes. Our generation will come to pass. During our short lifetime, 
How unfortunate is it that we fight, argue, and steal? As our generation passes by with the speed of light, we need to believe in Jesus Christ and live meaningful lives. We must live meaningful lives. That is living by faith. This world of vanities goes and does not return. They, they are all things. Our generation will pass by as a generation goes and a generation comes. Therefore, do not have any lingering affection for this world. But the Bible says there is something that lasts forever. It says, but the earth remains forever. This means that the foundations that God has made will remain. Thus, the conscience that God has created, the soul, and the heart that seeks God has been the same in the past, today, and will remain unchanged in the future. This ends our first lecture on the book of Ecclesiastes. Thank you.